For over a hundred years, movies have had an unmistakable impact on our culture, affecting everything from the music we listen to, the clothes we wear, and even to what we name our children. So it shouldn't be much of a surprise to learn that the movies have also affected the way we speak. Going beyond just classic catchphrases, movies have given us new definitions for words and, in several cases, brand new words. So join me as I crack open the dictionary to discover 12 words that came from the movies. Sheik, or shake as it's pronounced in Islamic countries, is an ancient term that refers to the patriarch of a tribe or family. In some instances, it translates simply to old man. But in 1921, Sheik took on an entirely new meaning when the silent classic The Sheik hit the big screen. The film created a sensation thanks to the heartthrob performance by Rudolph Valentino as the title character. Following this performance, A Sheik was now someone who was masterful and irresistibly charming to women. Definitely not an old man anymore. And hey, a quick bonus term, Rudolph Valentino was Hollywood's original Latin lover. The term Latin lover was actually created by Hollywood execs to build buzz around their young star. A bombshell is, of course, the housing for a bomb. And starting around 1850, people also started using the word to mean an unexpected thing or event that had a huge impact, as in a bombshell news report. But in 1933, a brand new definition for the word entered our language thanks to Jean Harlow and her performance in MGM's Bombshell. Her striking look with her platinum blonde hair and her sensational performance expanded the definition of bombshell to now mean an attractive girl or woman. Even today, many people still refer to Jean Harlow as the blonde bombshell. Now more than 60 years before Jack Dorsey sent out his first tweet on Twitter, the term Twitterpated was already a well-known word to millions of moviegoers. It was introduced by the owl character in Bambi to explain what was going on when Bambi, Thumper, and Flower saw other animals acting oddly around each other. <laughs> Why, don't you know? They're Twitterpated. Twitterpated? Twitterpated, of course, means smitten or lovestruck and it derives from the words Twitter, meaning tremendous excitement, and pate, which means head or brain. Bonus fun fact, the Disney songwriters actually created a song titled Twitter Pated to go in this scene in Bambi, but it was cut from the movie. But the song was featured on the 75th anniversary edition of the film. Gaslighting may be the most overused term of the past two years, but it's actually been a part of our language for more than half a century. Gaslight is shorthand for the practice of making someone else question their memory or even their sanity by manipulating their surroundings or by simply denying what they know is true. The term comes from the 1944 movie Gaslight, starring Ingrid Bergman as a wife whose husband, played by Charles Boyer, convinces her that she is stealing items and hearing noises in the attic that aren't real, when in fact, he is causing all those things to happen. And the term isn't a recent creation. The practice was first called gaslighting in the 1950s and was documented in psychological journals as early as the 1960s. My next word is not from a specific movie, but was inspired by a movie star. Bogart, of course, derives from Humphrey Bogart. The actor had a distinctive way of smoking cigarettes in many of his movies, often keeping the cigarette in his mouth until the entire cigarette had been fully smoked down to the butt. The early references to someone bogarting something were used in connection with marijuana smokers, who would often complain that someone who smoked more than their share of a joint was bogarting the joint. Today, bogarting can refer to anyone taking more than their fair share of something. Although it was actually used in the 1940s, it even appeared in a song written by Gloria Parker and Barney Young, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious really burst into our vocabulary in 1964 when Robert and Richard Sherman used it in one of their own songs written for Mary Poppins. 
It's meant to be a nonsense word that is defined as something to say when you have nothing to say. And many people like to cite it as the longest word in the English language. But it's not. The longest word in the dictionary is actually pneumono ultramicroscopic silicovolcano coniosis, which is a form of lung disease and a whole lot less fun to say. Now I'm willing to bet that you can quote a few lines from The Godfather, even if you've never seen the movie, which you should, duh, from an offer you can't refuse to sleeping with the fishes, there's so much great dialogue in this film. And the film's title even played a part in shaping our language. Prior to Mario Puzo's novel and Francis Ford Coppola's film, Godfather was primarily used in the religious sense of the word, meaning a man who serves as a sponsor for a child of baptism or a man who serves as a guardian. Now after 1972, the term Godfather took on a new definition to include the leader of a mafia family. A modified reading of one line in Ghostbusters forever changed the definition of the word toast. When battling the demons near the end of the film, Bill Murray was originally supposed to say, I'm going to turn this guy into toast. Instead, he said this. All right, this chick is toast. And believe it or not, that was the first time anyone had ever used toast to mean dead, finished, or doomed. Everyone who's seen Back to the Future, and I'm assuming that's everyone, knows it takes 1.21 gigawatts of energy to power the flux capacitor to send the DeLorean backward or forward in time. The thing is, there's no such thing as a gigawatt. When Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale wrote the script, they intended to use the real term gigawatt with a G, which is a billion watts. It wasn't until after the movie was done that they realized they'd used the wrong term. Although, technically, it is okay to pronounce gigawatt with a soft G. So, if you want to say gigawatt, it's perfectly fine to do that. I can't tell you what MILF stands for. If you don't know, remember that Google is your friend. But I can tell you where the term first appeared. John Cho not only used the term several times in the teen comedy American Pie, but he even defined it for everyone. I took some MILF. What the hell is that? M-I-L-F. Mom, I'd like to f Yeah! And technically, the term had been used in message boards before the movie came out, but American Pie and Stuffler's Mom introduced it to the rest of the world. Back in 1999, screenwriter Justin Zackham created a list called Justin's List of Things to Do Before I Kick the Bucket. He later shortened the list to Justin's Bucket List. At the top of his list was to have one of his screenplays produced by a major Hollywood studio. And he started to think that the list itself could make a strong idea for a movie. So he developed a screenplay about two terminally ill men who help each other check everything off of their lists. Many people think the term predates the movie, but all the earliest published references to the phrase bucket list are in articles about this movie. The 2010 documentary Catfish followed a young man who's fooled into thinking he's having a relationship with someone he met online, only to find out the person he's been communicating with is a fake online profile, one of actually 15 profiles the person had created. The term comes from a conversation in the film where the husband of the woman behind the accounts mentions that catfish are included in the tanks when live cod are shipped. The catfish in the tank keep the other fish alert and aware, which is suggested this person did by creating these fake accounts. Now, anyone who sets up a false personal profile on a social networking site for fraudulent or deceptive purposes is considered to be catfishing. Three years later, in 2013, when Notre Dame football player Manti Teo fell for a catfishing hoax, the term was cemented into our vocabulary. And there you have it, 12 words that come from the movies. If you have a favorite word or phrase that you first heard in a movie, please let me know about it in the comments below. And don't forget that I post a new video about my favorite classic movies here every Monday morning. So please be sure to subscribe so you can get an alert when my next video goes live. And as always, thank you for watching, 
and I hope to see you again here soon on A Million Movies.